It's like mm-hmm. you can watch him change and him go through some things just by listening to those two records. And I kind of lump them in as one record together personally most of the time. Number five is Lars and the Bastards. It's both of his records, and it's because I, I literally put a bunch of notes. I had to do a whole other page, like rip it out, throw it up, because I couldn't. It was too many scratch outs because that those records were driving me nuts. I couldn't figure out which one mattered the most. And I think that the first record is the better record. The second record has the most influence. It's got the most. It was the bigger album. Uh, mm, it they, they toured more on it. It probably sold more copies. Um, but they both have different things going for them because they're slightly different albums. It's like mm-hmm. you can watch him change and him go through some things just by listening to those two records. And I kind of lump them in as one record together personally most of the time. I don't even really know. I, I know I said that the first one's a better record, but dude, I'm telling you, I listened to the second one and I don't know that that's true. There's a little corny stuff in the lyrics a couple of times in the second record, but their second record is better. It's got more like uh, the songs are better written. The production's a little bit better. The vocals are a little bit better. The guitar's a little tighter and a little bit better solos. But the first record's like more of a punk rock, gritty punk rock record. So it just depends on what you're looking for, I guess. The first the first record is like the stuff they should have put on Rancid 2000, I think all got put on the uh, on the Lars album. Because right. like, no, no, for got, real. It, it's got the vibe of the Rancid 2000 vibe, which is done way better um, in a lot, of, dude, a lot of instances. I'm so glad you said that because I honestly think that that's what it is. As I look at that, it's like, oh, this is what they were, they should have done. Like Rancid 2000 was like what they were trying to to do was the Lars record, but Lars was probably writing these songs for this record, mm-hmm. and so he was giving them material, and it was like his B side stuff. Because I think like Dead American could totally go on Rancid 2000. Like that sounds like if you told me that song was on yes. Rancid 2000 or the, uh, the, the the Vietnam song, like well, those just lyrically, thematically sound um, like Rancid. Now, To Have or To Have Not, which is one of my all-time favorite songs, mm. that to me is like, if if Rancid was more Lars's band than like T- than Tim's band, I feel like that's a Rancid song then because that is uniquely Lars. Now, do you love the last song on the second album, the one where he's just kind of talking? Uh, Mary. Oh, Tennessee, you know? yes. I Isn't love that, awesome? that song. I lo- <laughs> dude, love it, dude. Love I it. I listen to it on repeat. I annoy people with it because like, are you supposed to a guy talk about like what it's like, like being semi-famous? I'm like, yeah. I, I love it because it's so ridiculous because it's so well, ridiculous and it's, and, it's, and it's likely true. The ridiculousness so, like, of the fame of punk rockers, I think is very interesting. You are famous yes. enough that two people like me and you in different states can do a podcast on you 10 years later, but at yeah. the same time, other than your unique look, you can pretty much go anywhere. No one knows who the hell you are. Like you're right. also not you're also not rich necessarily, but you're very well known in certain. And I think there's a lot of that contrast. And he's got but, he's got enough money to have a nice car and a house, but not enough money to drive a Lamborghini. You know, eating out of dumpsters and dated pop right. stars, but like yeah, well, like, you've done all those things. I mean, look at like what we do. We do YouTube, and my, I have a relatively large channel on the other end of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know. I, I nobody knows who I am, and if I got two hundred and seventy thousand people, nobody would know who I was still. So yeah. I can only imagine. Like, I don't remember where I was going with that. I had a point. I lost it. Anyways, yeah, Lars's life has got to be pretty strange, I would think, because he does have places that he can go and not be left alone. And but then otherwise, can you imagine like having a down day where you want some people to recognize you because you're kind of like bummed out about something or depressed, and you go walking around and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> That's got to be, and especially like if you're large, because let's face it, most 52 year old dudes don't have the word skunks tattooed on their forehead either. So, right. You know what I mean? Like clearly they know there's something up with you, but they probably just think you're a criminal and not right. like and, one half of one of the biggest bands ever. And he's, and he, and it's like, if it was Tim, he wouldn't care at all. Like he would be more bothered by people knowing who he was, mm-hmm. but like Lars is probably like, you know, because, and look, dude, people can say what they want. Anything that I say about Lars, dude, I love that guy, man. That, that dude is the jam, bro. So uh, everything I'm saying about him is with with love and reverence, man. He's a good dude. He's, he, I've talked to him on the phone a few times. He's very nice. Uh, you know, like a, a bucket list thing would be to get him on the podcast. It may not ever happen, but it, it, I do believe that it's a possibility. So, uh, on, Lars. yeah. Lars, Lars is the jam. 